The former Liberal leader Brendan Nelson is leaving politics sooner rather than later. He had been planning to wait until the next election, but now he's quitting at the end of the next month, forcing a by-election in his safe northern Sydney seat of Bradfield. And on PM Agenda Now, we're joined by the former Liberal leader, Dr Brendan Nelson. Thanks for your time. Why the change of heart? You had said you were going to wait until the next election. Well, thanks, Kieran. I, I've thought a lot about this over the last uh, six months, since February when I announced that I wouldn't recontest the next federal election. And in many ways, I've had uh, 14 years of opportunities, responsibilities and privileges bestowed upon me by the people of Bradfield, by the Liberal Party, and of course, when we're in government, by John Howard. But in terms of uh, the future of the electorate, I just think that it's sooner rather than later that the electorate needs to have a new and energetic representative. Uh, I also think the challenges facing the Parliamentary Liberal Party are such that it needs sooner rather than later to be joined by a person who's going to uh, energetically uh, contribute to not only policy development but also the framing of the government and the future of the party. You couldn't wait 12 months? The, the electorate couldn't have waited 12 months? Well, look, in one sense, Kieran, that would be the easier thing to do, to continue to represent my electorate and do some of the other things that I've been doing. But when I think about it uh, in terms of the future, I think it's time now that we had uh, a new enthusiastic person who comes in, that he or she can uh, really take up the cause for the electorate, which is being pummeled by Labor's overdevelopment, by proposed tax increases, the hits on private health insurance, Labor Party debt, and a variety of other things. And I have also made it clear that I would not at any time in the future seek to return to the leadership of the party, nor to return to the front bench. And on that basis, I think that it's in the party's interests the electorate's interests and they're in Australia's interests to get someone now who's going to work very much for the future and that's why I've made the decision. You say, you say it's been in the, uh, you say the decision is in the party's interests but Malcolm Turnbull is struggling in the opinion polls to say the least. This is the last thing that he needs right now is a by-election. Well in fact I disagree with you. I think uh, Kieran when I went to Bradfield in 1995 and offered myself for pre-selection I said to the Liberal Party members then that we needed to be thinking about our future. Not about 1996 so much as it was then, but where we would go over the next decade. And whilst these are obviously challenging times for the party at a parliamentary level, the decision needs to be made sooner rather than later to get somebody in there who's going to focus very much on our party's future. Uh, obviously no one enjoys or necessarily wants by-elections at the best of times, but uh, I believe that I have worked uh, very hard. I've put my heart and soul into representing my electorate, to doing the very best I can for my party. Uh, almost a year ago, my party decided uh, that they would rather have Mr Turnbull lead the party. I respect that decision. But in terms of the future, uh, I have already made it clear that I would not be a part of the uh, Liberal Party front bench, nor a part of its future leadership. And in a seat like Bradfield, which is an absolutely magnificent seat, in my opinion the best in the country, uh, I think the seat deserves no less than somebody that's putting 1,000% into representation of the electorate and also the not, future of the country. Do you, do you not concede, though, that if there's any movement at all against the Liberals, say a, a high-profile independent running, and the Liberals lose some support, that's going to be used against Malcolm Turnbull. It will adversely affect his leadership. This is, this is not doing him any favours at all. Oh, Kieran, well, look, look, I don't accept any of that. That's complete nonsense. I mean, what's important is that we already look as if we're going to have a very strong field of candidates for Liberal Party pre-selection. There are amongst the dozen or so candidates that have already indicated their likeliness, uh, likelihood of running. There are a significant number who will make an extraordinarily positive difference to the representation of both the electorate and the strength of the parliamentary Liberal Party. As I said, it's not about today, next month or six months time. It's about our party's best interests, the best interests of Bradfield over the medium to the long term. And sometimes you've got to make what seem to be difficult decisions at the time if you really want to get good long term outcomes. And that's what I'm focused on. You lost the leadership over uh, bad polls and divisions on climate change. Do you have any sense of deja vu on where the Liberals stand at the moment? Oh, look, my very strong view, and one of the reasons I lost the leadership of the Liberal Party, was because I wanted to strengthen up uh, our position in relation to it. 
I'm very strongly of the view that what we need to do is to base policy on principle. We need to put Australia's interests first. In my view, it, uh, it defies common sense, let alone violates the best interests of Australia, for us to legislate the most significant change in the economic architecture of this country with a new tax before we know what the major emitters of, in the rest of the world are going to do. That was my position last year. It remains my position today. And so uh, I think uh, that it's... And divisions in the party haven't changed one bit. Nothing's changed since uh, you left the job. Well, I, I'm not going to comment on any of that. Uh, look, uh, I was at... Um, recently, I spent a day at uh, Harvard University uh, with uh, Professor Dan Schrag, who is the uh, head of the uh, Department of Environment and Climate and other things, uh, contributes to the IPCC, amongst other things, and he made the observation that it's, in, it's better that we have a disagreement this is globally, uh, between and within countries, about something that is significant than agreement about something that's meaningless. And at the moment there is a very significant debate going on in the political class and indeed within the Liberal Party, there's also one in the Labor Party but it's not as open as it is in ours, about this fundamental change. Now, everyone's got to be absolutely clear about this, Kieran that the emissions trading scheme, which the government has rebadged as a carbon pollution reduction scheme, is in plain language a tax, TAX. It will wash through every household, every business, every, every part of Australia. And if we are to do this, and to do it for the benefit of our climate, we need to make sure that at 1.4% of global emissions that we are part of a genuinely global okay. response. That's you, my position right, well, on it. You, Nothing's changed. OK, well, you, you said you, the easier thing to do would be to stay 12 months. Peter Costello's in the same position as you. Uh, should he now call a by-election on the same day as yours? Oh, <laughs> Kieran, I'm hardly going to comment on something like that. Look, uh, every other member of the Parliamentary Liberal Party, whether it's Peter Costello or anybody else, makes his or her own decisions that are in the best interests of their electorate, of our party and our country and their family. Uh, I'll say it again, I said it last year, uh, if anybody has earned the right to decide what he or she will do with his future, it's Peter Costello. I can only speak for myself. Uh, it's never been my nature to uh, basically occupy a position when someone more capable, with more to contribute, and the way ahead is able to do it and should have an opportunity to do so. You talk about renewal, and in that context, what about Philip Ruddock, Bronwyn Bishop, some of the safest Liberal seats in the country? Well, Should they well, go? Well, Kieran, I mean, Jim Whaley has just joined your uh, network. It's fantastic. I um, mean, you're suggesting for a minute that uh, Jim ought to go. I mean, he's just come. <laughs> it's, look, Kieran, look, what you learn as you go through your life, as John Kennedy said, it's not a time of life, it's a state of mind. And what's important is that, unlike me, some of the other colleagues that, with whom I work, uh, who've been there for longer than I have, have much more to contribute yet in terms of energy, energy, intellect and the ability to take it up to, to the government. No one should be judged on the basis of how long he or she has been in the parliament, how old they are. They should be judged instead on their ability to work energetically for their electorate and contribute to the development okay. of national policy. Who should take over from you in Bradfield, in your view? <laughs> you, must have a, you must have a view on who would be the best person. Kieran, I, I, can't believe, look, I can't believe you asked me these questions. Look, there is a strong field. And uh, as a member of the Liberal Party, there aren't many opportunities to make the real decisions which shape the future of your electorate and your country. But one of them is in pre-selection. My very strong view is that it's entirely a matter for the Liberal Party members and pre-selectors. They will take advice from a whole range of people about who they think is best equipped to represent the electorate. But I am not going to actively involve myself in this and publicly or otherwise endorse any particular candidate. The okay, best, something, the, the best something part you will about actively... OK, I'll let you finish. Sorry. sorry <laughs> I was about. just about to say, the best part of it is that we've got a, already got a strong and large field uh, and I think that will grow over the next couple of weeks uh, when the okay. nominations open. Well, something, obviously, you will actively involve yourself in is your next step. Um, what, you say you don't have any firm jobs lined up, but uh, where are the prospects? Um, you were just in the United States. There have been some reports that you had discussions on the, in, in the defence area. Is that a possibility? Well, my objective through my life, Kieran, has been to do whatever I can to make a difference uh, to my uh, 
country, to the community in which I live. And by virtue of what's been invested in me over a long period of time, first by the medical profession and then by the Liberal Party and the taxpayers of Australia, I've developed a lot of uh, experience, I suppose, in health and defence and education. And I have particular interests and passions uh, in areas such as Aboriginal health and uh, drug addiction, for example. I don't know at this stage what the future will hold. And to be honest with you, I suspect most of the people watching it aren't particularly interested in uh, what I might do in the future at this stage. I have, over the last year, uh, since I lost the leadership of the Liberal Party, been approached by a variety of individuals and organisations, but I, I have nothing uh, that I have set into con concrete at the moment. OK, just one final question. As a former Defence Minister, I want you to get your perspective on this. It's been a big issue in the United States, the issue of torture, the use of torture by the CIA. One of your Liberal colleagues this morning on our AM Agenda program said uh, it has its place, torture, um, in, in combating terrorism. What's your view on that? Oh, Kieran, look, firstly it depends on how torture is so defined and uh, we live uh, in a liberal, humane and modern society. I don't think that we should uh, uh, generally countenance what we would consider to be torture and the brutal abuse of other people, uh, irrespective of what we think might be the heinous crimes that they have or might possibly commit. But you also need to understand, those of us in this country who live relatively comfortable, secure and peaceful lives, our generation is facing a struggle against resurgent totalitarianism, which is predominantly but not only in the form of Islamic extremism. We are dealing with people who murder, who murder innocent people. And 88 Australians were murdered in Bali in October 2002. 3,000 innocent people, mainly but not only Americans, lost their lives in September 11. We are dealing with people who commit those kinds of crimes. So I just say to those people in this country and in other places in the world who want to sit back and comfortably tut-tut and express certain views about the use of certain interrogation techniques to remember that we are dealing with people who in many cases live by the most heinous standards, if any, that have an attitude to the treatment of women which is incompatible with a peaceful society, let alone a peaceful world, who are totally opposed to the liberating power of education, are not just fanatically anti-American but are opposed to everything that we represent and have hijacked the good name of Islam to build a violent political utopia and we have to be prepared to stand up for it. In Brendan some, Nelson, in appreciate your time and no doubt we'll uh, speak to you again when Parliament returns in a couple of weeks. Thanks. We will, Kieran. Thank you.